On a recent outing to Liverpool, I had a lot of photos that I class as being near misses. I was finding myself slightly off-centre with the shots, or I had the camera tilted. With this shot, I wanted to be square onto the building and have someone walking past whilst engrossed with their phone. Unfortunately, this chap was faster than me, so the shot's off-centre and I'm just too far away. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to use perspective correction tools to rescue photos like this. I'm using Nick Perspective Effects from the Nick Collection, but there are other tools you can use. I'm starting with the image in Photoshop, where I'll duplicate my layer by pressing Command and J on the keyboard. I'll then apply Nick Perspective Effects to the copied layer because it's going to be a destructive change. With the layer selected in the Layers window, I can launch Perspective Effects from the Selective tool. With the image open in Perspective Effects, there are a few problems I can see I need to fix. The image isn't quite level, but I also have some tilt on the camera both vertically and horizontally, creating distortion. The bigger problem though is that I'm not in front of the shop front, so I'll need to crop in on that area as well. Something that can help you spot these problems is the grid which you can turn on by clicking the icon in the toolbar. Over on the right side of the screen are the different tools we can use to adjust the perspective and correct distortion. I'm going to use the perspective correction tools first. An easy way to fix most perspective problems is clicking the auto button here. But sometimes it doesn't fix everything, so let me show you how to do it manually. These icons represent the different corrections we can apply to the image perspective. I'll keep this simple and start with a horizontal correction. Clicking the icon gives me two horizontal lines with markers at each end. I can then click and drag these with my mouse, placing them on the edge in the photo that I want to be horizontal. I'll start with the edge between the pavement and the building. When I have both points in place, I can do the same with the other horizontal guide. This time I'll line up the window in the upstairs of the building. Notice that as I'm dragging the markers into position, the area below them is magnified. This helps me to line up with a lot of precision if I need to. When I've got the two horizontals in position, I can click the preview option. This shows me what the image will look like when the adjustment's applied. I'm happy with how that looks, so I'll apply the change. Next, I want to align the verticals, so I'll click the vertical icon in the perspective section. Now I have two vertical lines which I can line up just like I did with the horizontals. When I have those in position, I can click the preview button again. I'm happy with how that adjustment looks, so I'll click the apply button a second time. Now you may be wondering why I didn't use the rectangular perspective correction tool. This gives vertical and horizontal correction lines at the same time, with a point in each corner. You can then move the four points into position, just like we did with the other corrections. With an image like this though, there's a lot going on. It's actually difficult to find a section of the photo that should be rectangular. I find it much easier to apply the horizontal corrections separately to the vertical. If I click the preview option, we can compare the perspective change with the original image. Now that the perspective in the photo looks right, I'm ready to crop the image. I'll use the crop tool in Nick Perspective Effects for this, and I'll start by choosing the aspect ratio to use. 4.3 will probably work well with this image. I'm also going to click the Constraint to Image option. This prevents me from moving the crop outside the edge of the image, so that I don't have empty space that I'll need to get rid of later. The crop looks good, so I can apply the changes. Let's compare this with the original again, and I'm happy with how that looks. I can then save my image, and I'm back in Photoshop with the adjustments applied. All I then need to do is apply a black and white adjustment to my image to finish it. Now as I said earlier, you can make similar changes in lots of photo editors. This video shows another good example, but this time using Lightroom to correct distortion. It's quite amazing just what you can achieve in Lightroom alone, and it's a good one to watch next. Thanks for watching today, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you soon for another video.